Welcome to the Tear Talk Podcast with author, coach, and speaker, Mashani Allen. Known as the Golden Scribe, Mashani has over two decades of writing experience, and her passion for the craft has given her the opportunity to impart wisdom, affirmation, hope, and confidence into many. Let's listen now as Mashani delves into topics that have impacted her on her Tear Talk journey and helped her discover the power of the pen. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the Tear Talk podcast. So glad to have you all on today. As I was thinking about today's podcast, I just wanted to be able to share some truths that have been something that I've noticed that happens to me when pain and trauma and tragedy arise. Sadly, over the past couple of weeks, we've had some really horrible tragedies happen. We've had some unnecessary losses of life happen. And sometimes when the unthinkable takes place, we have to make sure that we don't become numb to the pain, to the hurt, to the unimaginable loss that others experience. And sadly, because this is happening more often than not, and because it may not impact us personally, sometimes we can possibly have a conversation or, you know, watch a newscast or read an article and, you know, we can keep going on with life. And that's a scary place to be when we don't take the time to really, I'm trying to think of the word that I want to say, but when we don't take the time to really recognize the pain. And I am fighting to make sure that I don't become numb, to make sure that I don't become unfeeling. And I don't even know if that's a word, but to make sure that I don't become numb to tragedy. And not that I want to walk around bleeding and being in pain and in tears, but I don't want to become inhuman. You know, I don't want to become where I'm not emotional to where I don't have feeling. And sadly, because there has just been so many unspeakable things happening, it can become easy to become numb. But I think numbness takes away our humanity. And I know with me that I I do have conversation with friends and I have conversation with family. And I think that that helps. But I also have found as of late that when things happen, I, I find myself having to write about it. And not just, not just in my journal and not just for myself, but as of late, I have found myself writing pieces of poetry in response. And what I'm beginning to see is that what I'm writing and the form of expression that is coming out of me as a result of these tragedies and this trauma and this pain is what I'm really doing. And it it was unknowingly, but I realized that I've been creating memorials through my pen for people that I've never met, for families that I've never encountered, and for pain that is not necessarily mine, but as a human, it is. And I went and I looked up the word memorial, and it means serving to preserve remembrance of or relating 
to memory. And I realized that by me allowing myself to have this form of expression for the trauma, for the pain, and for the tragedy, I'm, I'm creating a memorial for the families, for the friends, for the spouses, for the children of people that I've never met, but in my own way, I'm keeping alive the memory of loss that people have experienced. And I ended up writing a poem. I was kind of hearing the words after the first tragedy that took place. And then I heard even the more after the second tragedy took place. And it took me a moment, it took me actually a couple of days to actually write it and to actually pin it. And I even had shared with someone how I had posted it. And they said that they couldn't even really read it. They weren't in the space. They knew what it would, the topic that it would be about, but they weren't in the space to read it. And I can understand that, but I'm thankful that I'm able to create something that will be put in place that can help not just myself, but others when they read it to be able to process the pain. So the memorial I wrote for the tragedies we've just experienced was a poem and it's called The Violator. And it says, this word when heard can bring many emotions in deep pain and cause people's anger to be difficult to manage and refrain. For it can come without notice and innocent lives it can snuff while sometimes never facing prison, jail, or behind the back handcuffs. Violence is like water. It adapts to all shapes, sizes, and forms. It can be stealthily quiet or cause a ruckus larger than a desert storm, bringing with it heartache, which some never heal or can repair, sometimes as a result of evil or a stupid game of truth or dare. It leaves a winding path. No one is able to fully track or trace while leaving the largest voids in hearts that reflect on the face. To it, rules don't seem to apply and breaking them brings joy while wielding irreverence and disregard like a child's favorite toy. This violator comes in so many colorful costumes and disguises, while thoughtlessly creating a ripple effect that continually rises. It interrupts the standard while fracturing our comfort and trust, but we must submit it all to him, even our frustration of what's unjust. Again, this is a poem that I wrote called The Violator on 5-25-22. And I know that those who have been listening to me for quite some time, or even if it's your first time, I just can't help but impress and encourage you to find ways to process pain. And for me, my way, one of my main ways is my pen. And I am really sometimes shocked. I am surprised. I am amazed at what comes out of me when I put pen to paper. Some, I mean, honestly, sometimes it's, it's not even on my radar what's going to come out of me. It's, it's not even sometimes a thought of what I'm about to express. But when I put that pen to paper or I put my fingers to the keyboard, it just, it just flows. It just oozes. It just, it just expresses. It's like it expresses the parts of me or 
ideas or pain in such a way that it it brings a healing, but it also births a memorial. And I just think that that is an exceptionally beautiful gift. I have to call it a gift because it's not, it's not something that I try to do. It just comes out of me that way. And for others, it may be art, you know, it may be a painting, um, it may be music, you know, you sit to the piano and you just begin to play, play. But I encourage you to find that, that gift in you that pours out of you, that not only brings healing to you, but it brings healing to others. Because your way of expression, the memorials that you build, they can bring life, they can bring healing, they can bring hope. And I am what some call a wordsmith. And I'm able to fashion and form words almost like a tapestry, almost like someone who was sewing a quilt and how they use needle and thread. I use letters and words and how we can look and admire a quilt is the same way people can look at admire words, the same way people can look and admire art, the same way people can hear and admire music. And I think that we not only owe it to ourselves, but we owe it to humanity to find what is in us that causes us to express ourselves in our heart that can also help heal, help bring hope, help just help others, period, who may not be able to express themselves. But in looking at your art, in hearing your music, or reading your your poem, or your words, it can speak for them. And sometimes we have to be able to understand that the things that we do easily are bigger than us, and they're not just for us. Because when people are hurting and when people are in pain, it's not that they don't want to. Sometimes they just can't at that moment or during that season of time. But being able to hear or see or read something can help them to process, can help them to cry, can help them to release. And like I said last week, it can actually help them to exhale. I've had conversations before when I'm (laughs) in the middle of a thought and I can't think of the word and a friend may say it like, oh yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. You know, that's the very thing that our gifts can do. You know, our gifts can be the memorial stone that a person needs that helps them to heal, that helps them to find the words or be the words that they wanted to say that they didn't know how. And I'm thankful that my pen has been that for me and my pen has been that for others. And that's why I don't shut it down. I don't do it for the likes. I don't do it for the response. I do it, first of all, as a form of healing and a form of truth for me. But I also release it because I understand that it's bigger than me and it's not just for me. And what I'm beginning to understand is that when it comes to gifts, when it comes to graces, when it comes to abilities, it's not about the response. It's about the obedience. And when I say obedience, We never know how what we do impacts people. We never know how what we birth heals people. We never know 
how one sentence can just help people. And I've just learned, like when I'm hearing something in my head, it might be one word, one line, you know, I make the time to get it out of me because I never know. And something, sometimes I will never know how much that it impacted, helped, and was just needed for someone else. And it's interesting because I ended up applying for some poetry contest on last week. And all of the poems that I submitted were based on memorials. Well, two of them. Like there was one that I submitted that I wrote that was called Legends that was based on the passing of Sidney Poitier. And it wasn't until I was gathering the poems that I began to see that I had been writing memorials for quite some time. And again, it's for people that I know. It's for people that I've never met. But I think that it's important. <laughs> and I've just found found myself unknowingly allowing my pen to establish memorials. And I think that it will serve a purpose now. And then it also serves a purpose in the future for people that I'll never meet, even when I'm no longer here. Those words have established <laughs> a reminder. Those words have established a moment in time. Those words have etched something in hearts and will continue to do so. And this is something that I don't take lightly and I don't take for granted. And I was looking at a, a, a Facebook memory from a few years ago, and I was encouraging people not to put just in front of one of the, what they do. So this isn't just a gift, and this isn't just a poem. Because when I put just in front of it, it takes away the power and the significance of what it really is. So don't say you just write. Or you just sew, or you, you know, you just play, or you just sing. No, allow the fullness of that word to be expressed. I write, I sing, <laughs> I do art, I do poetry. You know, don't take away the significance of the gift that you offer, not just to your friends and your family, but to even complete strangers and let it be fully received. Let it be fully embraced. Let it be fully accepted. And please let it be fully released. You know, there there was a time when I would just, you know, put everything in my journal and I would just keep it for myself. And especially if I put something out there and nobody liked it at all, you know, I would wonder, should I do it the next time? But then I had to understand it's not about people's response. It's about me allowing them to have <laughs> the response. <laughs> because then I would have a conversation with people and I, you know, I read what you wrote, you know, a month ago. And I'm like, you did? <laughs> Had no idea you did. And I just be became free of needing the responses of people. And I just had to embrace that people are responding, even if they're not saying that they are, or they're not putting a notification that they did. I still have to do my part of releasing it. And first out of me by putting the pen to the paper and the pen to the keyboard, but then putting it in places where it can be seen, where it can be heard to where it can be 
the very thing that helps people to exhale and release the pain that they're experiencing. So I hope that you allow yourself to be that instrument. You know, I hope you allow yourself to be that voice. I hope you allow yourself to be that pen, that keyboard, that that tapestry, that canvas. I hope you allow yourself to be that for others. As you are first that for yourself. And I pray that the next time that you hear that a Tear Talk podcast is loaded, that you decide to press play. Thank you for joining the Tear Talk podcast. You can purchase today's featured t-shirt and learn more about Mashani by visiting MashaniAllen.com. Also, check out her exclusive line of custom journals at bit.ly forward slash the golden scribe.